All utility interactive systems use a safety feature known as anti-islanding. Anti this is to prevent the solar array from remaining connected to the electric utility when the grid is down. Even with the, in times when the grid is down, the sun continues to uh, send uh, solar energy which are being received by the panels. So the, the arrays continue to generate electrical energy. It comes out in the form of DC voltage that goes to the inverter. So even when the, uh, the grid is cut down, the PV system does not know it and continue to generate electricity. And for this, we have what we call an automatic anti-islanding to prevent the solar array from remaining connected when the grid is down. On the uh, picture in, in, the, in the bottom, we see that they have, we have three levels of switching, of disconnection between the PV system on the top, the panels, the arrays, and the grid on the right, on the bottom right. Automatic one, which takes care of what we call anti-islanding, meaning that automatically, when the grid is down, that particular device will shut down, will split, will cut the connection between the array and the grid. And then we have two manuals. On the left is a DC disconnect, because DC voltage coming out of the panel, of the panels, of the arrays. And on the right, it's manual AC. The job of the DC disconnect switch is to separate and isolate all the PV array from the entire system. If we need to repair the uh, automatic uh, inverter, if we need to repair anything which on the right to the automatic inverter, the anti-islanding inverter, we first of all disconnect the left one in order to separate the PV array, because we have to keep in mind the PV array continuously, non-stop, generate electrical energy because the sun non-stop uh, inject the beam. So in order to disconnect the DC side, the panels, the arrays from the AC side, first of all we have the DC disconnect. The AC disconnect on the right to the automatic is to, to distinguish between, to split between the PV system as a whole as a complete system, and the grid on the right. If we connect it, the AC disconnect, if we switch it on manually, then we provide electrical energy to the console, to the distribution and junction box, and from there it goes to a meter, like we said before, and it goes to the grid. More about PV anti islanding it basically looks at three parameters, frequency, voltage, and utility impedance. In other words, this particular mechanism, which resides within the inverter, looks at the frequency of the grid. It has to be within a very, very close tolerance. Let's say, just for an example, if we are talking about a 50 Hertz system, the tolerance will be plus minus one Hertz. If the frequency of the grid goes beyond these tolerance levels, the anti-islanding circuitry mechanism will automatically shut, cut, split the grid from the PV array, from the PV system. Also the voltage. If we are talking about 230 volt AC that the grid needs or the grid should have, if we go above the 230 plus 5 volts or minus 5 volts, the anti-islanding circuitry automatically will split the system. And also the utility impedance. If there is a cutout, cutoff in the grid, meaning there is a, a high impedance on the cables and on the uh, connectors, then automatically the anti-islanding circuitry will get into the operation. Now let's look at the two pictures. The one on the left, we show here a very interesting configuration 
called microinverters. We can see that each panel on the left and bottom, each panel has a microconverter attached to it, co is connected to it directly. These two channels coming from the two panels, each of them goes to a micro inverter, goes to a breaker, a breaker panel, a manual one. On the left, there will be a meter and it will go to the grid. On the right, it will be the appliances. But this is to say that we have a configuration that every single panel has a micro inverter, kind of a personal inverter. And this personal inverter has an anti-islanding resides integrally within it, a circuitry. And if something happens to the grid or to the appliances on the right hand side, then that particular anti-islanding of a particular micro inverter will split the DC area or the PV area from the entire AC side. On the right hand side, we see another configuration of inversion and another configuration of anti-islanding. We have one big common uh, inverter, common to all the panels, as opposed to what we saw before, a micro inverter, a personal micro inverter for each panel. On the right, we see one single inverter. It can be single phase or it can be, it can be three phase. But they inside, they internally contain anti-islanding circuitry for protection and insulation. So there are two configurations, my personal micro inverters per panel and a common inverter per array. Just to summarize a little bit what we just said before. The inverters used in a utility interactive system, the system that we are talking right now are utility interactive, meaning that the system, the PV system can sense when something has happened to the grid and act accordingly. So the inverters used in utility interactive systems disconnect themselves from the grid when the voltage or frequency of the electric utility falls out of a specific range. The, inverse, the inverters will automatically reconnect to the electric utility system only after the voltage and frequency values are within an acceptable range for a predetermined length of time. We can program the system that one minute after the power comes up in the grid and stays within, stays steadily within, within the tolerances, only then automatically the system will get, the, the inverters will uh, get reconnected. This is a safety feature to protect electric utility, utility line workers from being injured by PV systems that are pushing power back on to otherwise de-energized power lines. This is just all what we said. This utility interaction anti-islanding is basically for the safety of the workers who work on the PV array.